This is the future. Hello my fellow Dream Chasers and Disney fans across the world and welcome to the latest episode of Kingdom of Isolation. Just as a quick heads up folks, I am recording this after I've recorded uh, Fantasia, but don't worry, I will make sure this is up before Fantasia. Um, it's... Uh, I've I've kind of thrown I've kind of thrown the schedule out of the window uh, this week just with everything that's going on right now. But uh, um, rest assured, we'll be back on track uh, as of uh, next week. Um, still looking for a guest for um, reviewing uh, the original Dumbo, folks. If anybody wants to join in with that. But anyway, um, welcome to the latest episode of Kingdom of Isolation, where. Given the circumstances, we are isolating ourselves with the magic of Disney. This time around, we are looking at Pinocchio, released in 1940. The second full-length Disney film released after uh, Snow White. Um, so, yeah, and with me reviewing it uh, today is um, uh, an amazing friend who just personifies the word positivity. My fellow Arianator, uh, Ariano Grande fans, for, the, for those who don't know, and also Christmas baby, Eleni Yapanis. Eli, wel welcome along today. Hi. Yeah, how are you doing today? I'm good, yeah, how are you? Ah, uh, you know, just soldiering on as I often do, especially given the oh, circumstances yes. right now. <laughs> yeah, and, but yeah, for, for those that don't know how this uh, uh, works, it, it works basically the same as my regular uh, film reviews, which I am going to try and get back up and running uh, uh, at some point because um, I managed to get some uh, digital downloads for some of the films that have been out over the course of the last uh, uh, couple of months, uh, not just here in the UK but uh, across the world as well. And because uh, yeah, with with this whole with this whole pandemic we're dealing with right now, it's just thrown the it's just thrown the entire world into basically chaos. Yeah. We have no idea what's <laughs> happening. We have no idea what's happening, no idea what's going on, but uh, uh, we might as well make the best of the situation. And um, I've started this. I started this series last week because uh, March twenty fourth, which was a week past Tuesday at time of recording, Disney Plus launched in the UK, and I figured, you know what? Let's kill the time and <laughs> let let's kill the time, make the most of the situation, and review all the Disney films. And now I'm sticking with the animated films right now uh, but don't worry folks i will be doing the live action and pixar films eventually i've got a lot of films to get through so anyway uh pinocchio let's get started uh yeah uh, based on the book by uh carlo Collodi, and uh oh my word uh i have read the book uh, i've only read it once though but oh my word the source material is a lot darker than um, than the film, uh, and that's why fa and that's why you've got fans criticizing Disney for Disneyfying the um, uh, the stories. I mean, because if if the film's actually stuck to the uh, actual um, source material, uh, yeah, um, yeah, we definitely wouldn't be getting um, U ratings. We'd be getting <coughs> PGs or even twelves. <laughs> but anyway, uh. Premise of, the, premise of the story, you've got Pinocchio, who's a puppet, uh, wants to become a real boy, but has to put a lot of work in for that to actually happen. And um, let's, get, let's, get, let's get this out of the way. Yep. Spoiler alert if you've somehow still not seen this film. But um, <laughs> anyway. anyway um, so the five, the five subjects, as always, uh, story, characters, visuals, or animation in this case, soundtrack, and test of time that all the legacy uh, subject how well the film holds up today so shall we get started yeah so <laughs> so uh start of the film and we've got jiminy cricket singing the title track 
uh, well, I, I see Tiger Track. It's it's a song that's become Disney's anthem, essentially. When you wish upon a star, and um, and a cl- and a cl- couple of um, bits of um, uh, I, w- I would call it foreshadowing, uh, essentially, of uh, future projects that um, that Disney had in the pipeline before Second World War broke out, uh, where you've got. You've got Jiminy on top of the Pinocchio book itself, and you've got a couple of other books in like uh, a bookcase. One says Peter Pan, and one says Alice in Wonderland, two future Disney films, and we'll get to those uh, in the next few weeks. And and then Jiminy ends up uh, becoming a narrator for um, uh, the first few minutes of the film. Uh, talking about how he ends up becoming uh, a conscience, where uh, at this uh, at the start of the film he's already a conscience, but he tells us how he got to that point, and that's when we're introduced to where the where the film takes place. We meet Geppetto and we meet Figaro, which was um, which was where um, uh, my mum got the name for our first cat. Because uh, a, a lot of our, um, let's say, uh, a couple of the a couple of the cats that we had were named after, well, cats from uh, uh, Disney films. Uh, we had Figaro uh, from, well, uh, Pinocchio, and then you had Oliver because he was a ginger, uh, ginger cat. Oliver from uh, Oliver and Company. And. Uh, yeah, uh, what else? And, and then, and then, uh, oh boy, uh, boy, uh, second Disney film in a row, and we end up with uh, another uh, uh, innuendo for the um, for the adults in the audience. Um, <laughs> when when Jiminy says, "As I started warming um, myself," because you know he can't say the other thing, otherwise rating goes up right out the gate. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. Um, we actually see some of the creations that Geppetto has made, everything from toys to clocks and uh, and even music boxes as well. But but the but the main creation we're after is of course the wooden puppet named Pinocchio. And uh, a, a little a little running gag that I have in these um, uh, whenever I'm watching a film, if they mention the name of the film, uh, taking a page out of uh, YouTube channel Cinema Sins playbook i just go roll credits <laughs> but yeah it's uh gonna be, but yeah um it's uh and that's and then and then all manner of um and then all manner of chaos ensues when uh, you've got um when you've got the blue fairy coming in uh, after geppetto makes his wish for pinocchio to uh, become a real boy. Figaro's not a fan of the name, and neither's Cleo. But Geppetto um, <laughs> uh, uses one of the strings and then just nods Pinocchio's head, and he's like, "Yep, yep, works for me." <laughs> even though majority, even though two to one majority were against the name. <laughs> well, technically two each when Geppetto came up with the name anyway. But uh, but yeah, then strings are removed. Pinocchio wakes up, and um, it's <sighs> oh boy, and uh, Pinocchio just very curious about everything that's um, uh, going on, and then um, and then we end up with an, another great song from uh, the film where you've got a uh, uh, Jiminy uh, being dubbed. Uh, Pinocchio's conscience, uh, and this is before this is before he gets the badge at the end of the film. Uh, but we'll we'll get to we'll get to the badge eventually. Uh, from there, we've got um, uh, always let your conscience be your guide, uh, which is which is mm. also. I mean, who'd have thought that a film like Pinocchio would have great life messages, even it really does, yeah. Even eighty years later. I know. I watched it like I watched it only just recently, and it absolutely like it's like I was kind of inspired by it. I just love the message that it gives to mm-hmm. like 
not even not only younger children but like us as well and adults as well and it just appeals to everyone i think mm-hmm. yeah yeah i mean especially i mean especially especially with um i mean especially with what um especially with what we've uh, both been through uh, we won't sh- we won't share the details folks uh but um oh, don't you worry yeah <laughs> we'll say we, I say, we we won't share the details, but uh, uh, let's just say uh, let's just say that night. Um, let's just say the night this the night the major incident happened. Um, let's just say I'm lucky I slept that night. I think we I think we were pretty much all on that same boat. Yeah. But um. Uh, but yeah. Um, let's say, uh, and I and I actually got interviewed about uh, the incident. Um. Um, uh, I actually got interviewed uh, regarding uh, the incident uh, the following day uh, by the Financial Times, and I still have that copy of the Financial Times under my desk to this day. Wow! Wow! Yeah, I was like, it was. It wasn't easy getting through that interview, but as time's gone on, I've I found it. I found I'm I'm fat. That I found that I'm finding it easier to talk about what happened that night uh, especially with us approaching Amazing. especially with us approaching three years since that night i know it's gone by so quickly yeah um but uh but yeah at the end at the end of the day um at the end of the day we've um we've come on leaps and bounds since exactly since then um but anyway yeah back back to pinocchio uh where did i get up <laughs> where else did I? Get, where else did we get up to? Uh, blah, 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 blue, blue fairy. Uh, life messages. Uh, always let your conscience be your guide. That's where we we're at. Once the song yeah. fini- Once the song finishes, Pinocchio falls off the worktop, wakes everybody up in the house, and um, Geppetto's like, "Who's there?" Pinocchio says, "It's me." And Geppetto's like, "Wait, what? Wait a minute. What's going on here?" <laughs> um, and the and the music at this point, it's. The way it builds the tension, uh, as uh, before the before the final payoff, and oh my word, it, yes, <laughs> it's a little bit exaggerated, but uh, but you you can't help you can't help but uh, but chuckle at it. Um, <laughs> uh, Geppetto actually looking for um, where the noise came from, unaware that it's actually Pinocchio, and then Pinocchio <laughs> goes, "Here I am." Slide poke a figure out, and then woof shoots up, <laughs> gun fires, and everything goes off. Uh, well, I've got granted being in the clocks, but uh, even even Jiminy Cricket almost ends up getting shot. I mean, for goodness' sake, Geppetto, what were you aiming the thing? <laughs> and then, and then Geppetto, and, and then Geppetto thinks he's actually dreaming when he sees that uh, Pinocchio is actually talking. Uh, huge bucket of water all over him, and uh, <laughs> even ends up soaking Figaro in the process. And then, <laughs> and then it's just a case of now let's now let's see what's going on. And then, and then everything starts to and then everything starts to fall into place. Uh, and Geppetto Gepetto thinks his wishes come true. I mean, yes, Pinocchio is alive technically, but not a real boy yet, because. Uh, how how does how's he um how is Pinocchio getting to become a real boy? Well, let's uh, let's go back to what the Blue Fairy said for that to actually happen. Prove yourself brave, truthful, and unselfish, and someday you'll be a real boy. And then we get into the main, and then we get into the second act of the film. Pinocchio heading for his first day at school has a book, gets an apple for um. For something to eat, um, and uh, basic, and um, not sure if it's unsettling or not, but uh, basically, it's sort of like exorcist style spin, but instead of spinning the head, it's uh, it's the rest of his body. Not sure if that's unsettling or not, but uh, but yeah. Um, after that, that's when we get introduced to uh, Gideon and Honest John. And uh, interesting fact, folks, um, uh, Gideon, uh, he does have 
a voice actor, essentially, but uh, it's uncredited. And uh, who is this voice of uh, Gideon at one po- at a couple of points during the film? Um, well, none other than legendary Looney Tunes voice actor Mel Blanc. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That Mel Blanc. <laughs> Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, Porky Pig, Marvin the Martian. Where's the kaboom? There was supposed to be an earth-shattering kaboom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that Mel Blanc. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh boy, but wow. I mean, I mean, the man, the myth, the legend. I mean, working for Warner Brothers, and ends up giving us a, and ends up doing a cup, a small scene of voiceover work for Disney. Who knew? I know. And then, and then we get into the next song of the film, um, where it's. Uh, and where uh, Honest John tells Pinocchio about an acting school. Uh, well, I say acting school. He says theatre. Um, and at that point, uh, that's when we get introduced to another song. Uh, uh, Hi, diddle dee, an actor's life for me. I mean, I mean, the songs throughout the entire film so far, just really cheery, really upbeat. And yeah. it works. It works for what's going on in the film right now, and and then after, and then uh, Jiminy does manage to catch up with uh, Gideon, John, and Pinocchio there, and oh, and and then uh, Gideon actually spots Jiminy on top of Honest John's hat, uh, and he ends up with a bloomin' mallet. Goodness knows where he got it from, and. Uh, Goes goes to smash Jiminy Cricket, because um, uh, in the book, uh, Pinocchio does actually step on Jiminy Cricket, killing him in the process. Yeah, let's be thankful. That, let's be let's actually be thankful that Disney didn't actually stick to the source material completely. <laughs> uh, but instead of smashing Jiminy, smashes on his John's head right into the hat, and. Um, another one of my another one of my favorites. I think you it you cannot decipher what he is saying, and uh, the only thing you actually hear him say when he's actually when his head's in the hat is when you have got Gideon um, taking it's like opening the top of the hat as if it's a tin, and John just shouts, "Get me out of here!" <laughs> And then, and then Gideon, uh, very, very, very clever ingenuity for this one, uh, uses John's cane, uh, uh, prize, uh, prize the hat, uh, use, using the using the cane essentially as a crowbar, um, and then you've got the and then you've got the drum roll in the music with with the music building up as well, and then, and then boom, top of the mallet. Uh, the, the mallet, boom, top of the hat, and John's free from the hat. And while all that is going on, Jiminy is telling Pinocchio, um, thanks, telling Pinocchio to tell John, thanks for the offer, but I need to go to school. And what does Pinocchio do? Completely ignores it! <laughs> and then, and then we get introduced to Stromboli, the, the guy in charge of the theatre, and and that's when we get the next song in the um, in the film. I've got no strings, which which I've seen people perform numerous times, be it as Pinocchio or just singing it in general. And uh, the start the start doesn't actually go too well. And but uh, one small issue with Stromboli though, he does have a bit of a short temper. Yeah. But um, but apart from that, uh, Pinocchio does end up getting through the entire song, and we end up being introduced to like various puppets from uh, across the world, and you end up with them, um, and then you end up finishing with these Russian puppets. Hey, hey, hey! Oh, <laughs> something. Uh, but and then huge standing ovation, coins flooding the um uh, the stage stromboli on stage and 
Jiminy just abandons Pinocchio. He's like, what? And he says, what would an actor want with a conscience anyway? And after that, uh, Pinocchio ends up with Stromboli about to go on tour, essentially. And uh, and that's when things take a, a, take a drastic turn. Yeah. Uh, where... Where Pinocchio uh, wants to go tell his father, uh, tell Geppetto what's going on, but uh, Stromboli refuses, locks him inside of a cage! Yeah, and... Uh, and, uh, and and that's just the start of the... Um, that's just the start of the dark things in the film. Uh, but yeah! Um, Geppetto leaves Figaro and Cleo, the goldfish, forgot to, forgot to mention them earlier, um, <laughs> um, Geppetto says, nobody eats until I get back with Pinocchio. How long that's going to take, we don't know at this point. Um, but, and, and Figaro, it's just the expressions on Figaro's face, it's, <laughs> it's just priceless. He's, he's just sitting there, just I wonder if this is. I wonder if this is where people got the base for Grumpy Cat all these years later. <laughs> but um, let's say then, uh, Geppetto tries to shout for Pinocchio uh, one more time when you see Stromboli's um, carriage um, going past. Tries to shout for Pinocchio one more time, but the lightning, the thunder and lightning, drowns him out. Jiminy's, Jiminy's managed to find Pinocchio by this point, and um, and then you've got the Blue Fairy coming into play again, um, and the more lies that Pinocchio tells, the just the bigger his the bigger his nose grows, and that and that was actually that was actually one of the that was one of the survey answers uh, on an episode of Family Fortunes way back when, uh, a way to tell if people are lying and. People actually said nose grows, and that was people said nose grows, and that was and that was one of the answers on the board. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean that, that's just probably you know probably just an old wives' tale there uh, for that one. But anyway, um, it's a good one. Yeah, I say, and, and again, it's it's a again. It's a clever mess. It's a clever thing for yeah. parents to tell uh, youngsters: if you don't stop lying, you won't. Your nose won't stop <laughs> growing. Or what's that effect? Um, the blue fairy ends up freeing Pinocchio. Um, they end up getting out, um, and then we end up being introduced to the coachman. And this is where the next, the next portion of the second act comes into play, where you where we get introduced to P Pleasure Island. And, oh boy, the, the climax of that scene? Yeah. We'll, we'll get to that shortly. Don't worry. We will get there. Um, Pinocchio and Jiminy manage to get back to their home and uh, to find out that nobody's there. But uh, luckily, l luckily, uh, I would imagine somebody associated with the blue fairy it's not actually the blue fairy but um so like uh, angelic bird with a message uh saying that uh geppetto figaro and click oh wait a minute that's all after oh, flip oh i've messed this up slightly that is all before that that's all after the whole pleasure island thing right okay Let's get back on track. Pinocchio ends up bumping into Honest John uh, and Gideon again on their way home. Uh, Gideon and John tell them, well, mainly John. Uh, John tells them about tells them about Pleasure Island. Uh, end up going onto the coach, and that's where we get introduced to somebody that ends up befriending Pinocchio, uh, Lampwick. And oh boy, here we go with Pleasure Island. Um, just, yeah, exactly pleasure. 
Uh, yeah, a bit ironic. <laughs> a bit ironic there. Um, but, oh boy. Uh, just, the boys are just allowed to let loose. The, the boys are just let loose, vandalizing everything without any consequences. They're allowed to smoke, they're allowed to drink. Yeah, that's the sort of thing that definitely wouldn't fly in 2020. Uh, but, but then, after all that, um, uh, oh boy, um, let's see, um, uh, Pinocchio ends up being abandoned by Jiminy again, uh, because they've ended up basically falling out, uh, well, Jiminy falls out with uh, Pinocchio, and Pinocchio's trying to explain what's going on. But, um, yeah, uh, while Jiminy is f trying to find a way to get out of Pleasure Island, uh, what happens next? That's when we get introduced to the boys turning into donkeys! <laughs> and uh, it's not until we see... It's not until we see what is... Um, uh, well, let's put it this way. There, um, this is where we get introduced. This, this is where we see the transformation take place. Lampwick ends up being fully transformed into a donkey, and the look on Pinocchio's face, and it's horrified. <laughs> Just horrified, personified, and and they end up they end up having a they end up having a joke about it. Um, uh, Lampwick going, uh, "What do you think I look like? A jackass?" And and then they end up and then they end up starting to sound like donkeys, and oh boy, yeah, um, we and we thought the um, we thought that whole forest sequence in uh, Snow White was. Um, Terrifying? Yeah. You are, <laughs> you are actually witnessing a boy transforming into a donkey. Yeah. Good luck sleeping tonight. <laughs> uh, but then, luckily, Pinocchio and Jiminy do manage to escape. And then they get back. Then they get back home. Realize nobody's there. Message comes down from, um, from the stars. Um... To f and they find out that uh, Geppetto, Cleo, and Figaro have been swallowed by Monstro the Whale. And uh, Pinocchio decides, right, that's it. I'm going to go find them. And um, the, so the sound design for how they managed to make Pinocchio and Jiminy sound when they're underwater, I don't even know how they managed it, but, what <laughs> but whatever they used... Massive kudos to them for that. Yeah. And um, uh, a running gag throughout that particular scene. Um, any but any sea creature they talk to is oh, they, any creature they any sea creature they talk to. They ask if where if they know where Monstro is, and they just like whoop, swims up, swim away very quickly. Or in the mm -hmm. case of a clam's case um burying itself in the sand yeah they do not want anything <laughs> to do with monstro and uh when you actually s when you actually see what this thing can do yeah i don't blame them <laughs> but uh then we see and then we actually see the boat that geppetto figaro and cleo are on uh and the boat is indeed inside Monstro. Oh boy, yeah, like I say, like I say, the size of him. Oh boy. <laughs> um, and uh, and um, of course, for the Kingdom Hearts fans out there, um, something I should have mentioned when I recorded um, uh, Fantasia uh, yesterday. Uh, Chernobog is one of the bosses in the original Kingdom Hearts game, and there's actually a world in Dream Drop Distance dedicated to Fantasia, 
on top of all that, Monstro is a secret boss in Birth by Sleep. Yeah, I've played all the Kingdom Hearts games. Haven't? I haven't completed them all per se. Like, I haven't got all the platinum. I haven't got all the platinum trophies. I've got the platinum for Kingdom Hearts three, but I'm going to be working on getting the platinum trophies for the rest of the Kingdom Hearts games. But yeah, um, you see, big school of fish. Um, uh, Monstro just Monstro actually wakes up, sees the fish, and he's like, "Okay, it's time to eat." And then it's just <laughs> the the sharp note where the sharp notes where they where monstro fully wakes up the fish try to swim away nope monstro eats the lot yeah um definitely something i don't think was covered in the original book granted it's been a while since i've actually read it but yeah, and uh, Geppetto, just overwhelmed with joy that finally we get to eat. And Ooh. then uh, Pinocchio and Jiminy, well, Pinocchio mainly, uh, Pinocchio ends up being caught by Monstro at the end. And uh, Jiminy, tries he might, can't get in. Uh, but then, everyone's, re everyone, I say Pinocchio reunited with Geppetto, Figaro and Cleo, reunited with them. Um... We find that while they've been stuck inside Monstro, Geppetto's built a raft. But, uh, basically, no way of getting out. But Pinocchio ends up having an idea, uh, decides to try and uh, make Monstro sneeze, and this is the climax of the film. It is intense, it is fast-paced throughout the entire film, uh, well, throughout the entire climax, and, uh, oh, boy, the music. Wow. <laughs> they did not have to make this music, the music sound as epic as they did. But my word, they delivered. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. Um, uh, Raft ends up getting, dis Raft ends up getting destroyed. And Pinocchio swims over to get uh, Geppetto to try and get to shore. Because it's a case that, yeah, yeah, father. Yes, Dad, I am not leaving you behind. And, oh, boy. The end to that scene, though, just... For a split second, you think, yeah, he's going to make it. But the huge leap that Monstro makes to just devour Pinocchio and Geppetto just before they get to shore. Oh, Boy, and at that point, it's at that point when you've got Geppetto, Figaro, and Cleo just washing up onto the shore. You think it to yourself, "Wait, where's Pinocchio?" And it's, and then another shot, another sharp music cue. Pinoc uh, Jiminy looking for Pinocchio at this point, and oh boy, um, yeah, uh, the sh the music cue, Pinocchio. Face down, in the water, not moving at all. And at that point, you're thinking, ah, I think he's dead. And, oh boy. That was, I mean, looking back on it now, yeah, that's, that's a tough, st I think, those sort of scenes, yeah. those sort of scenes, looking back on them now, they are very tough to watch. Just because of the emotional just because of the emotional build-up throughout the entire... Th th just because of the emotional build-up throughout that third act with trying to get away from Monstro. Um, and then... I was like, is it everyone, Geppetto, Jiminy, Cleo, Figaro, all basically in tears. As, <laughs> as with a lot of people watching this when, when it uh, came out and with the subsequent re-releases afterwards... And mm -hmm. can you blame them? No. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, and then you've got big beam of light shining on Pinocchio. Uh, and by this point, he's already got his uh, donkey ears. He's got his donkey tail. All that gets, um, all that gets magicked away 
Pinocchio ends up becoming a real boy, and Geppetto's just... And then Pinocchio becomes a real boy. Geppetto initially not wanting to believe that Pinocchio is actually alive and a real boy. And then... But then when Pinocchio does... But then when Geppetto does see what's happened, and uh, everyone starts celebrating, even Figaro ends up kissing Cleo at the end. <laughs> and then... Um, and then same... Uh, same sound effects from uh, earlier when Geppetto shot his gun after uh, being startled by Figaro, who got startled by Pinocchio. Um, just all the clocks uh, coming to life, all the music boxes, and you even see Geppetto with Geppetto with his accordion. Uh, now, I'm not sure if we... See, I'm trying to remember. Uh, does he showcase his accordion earlier in the film, or is this the only time we see it? I think it might be the only time we've seen it. I don't remember seeing it earlier. Mm, yeah. Was it? And then, I have to rewatch it again. <laughs> yeah. But, um, uh, was it? And then Jiminy thanks uh, the Blue Fairy for... for... Uh, thanks to Blue Fairy for everything they've uh, that she's done to help them. Uh, another sh another beam of light shines on Jiminy, and that's where we see his official conscience badge, twenty four <laughs> karat gold. It even says twenty four karat on it. <laughs> and um, and there we go. That's the end of the film. So so yeah. The, so yeah. This. Um, so yeah, you'll have probably noticed from the runtime, this is uh, a little bit shorter than in the previous two episodes that I've um, mm -hmm. uh, recorded. But um, but yeah, I would imagine that um, uh, the next episode after Fan after these after Pinocchio and Fantasia go up on my channel, uh, Dumbo, that will be even shorter because uh, that film's just over an hour long. Oh really? Uh, That's so like, short. Yeah, I think it's I think it's because. Uh, uh, Disney needed to recoup their losses by making something cheap and fast, oh. uh, b because because um, at this point, trying to distribute the films internationally wasn't feasible because at this point World War Two had already started. Yeah, but uh, but hey, that was the great thing with uh, re-releases back in the day. They were able to uh, they were able to they were able to recoup those losses through the re-releases and um so yeah so yeah that so yeah who'd have thought re-releases would um actually help with making extra money for um for disney who would end up becoming a business juggernaut today <laughs> but uh yeah um so yeah I, I did take a lot i did take a lot of things into consideration when it came to ranking um all the segments uh, uh the subjects uh the the story um uh, the story the characters the visuals soundtrack and the um uh it was like and the uh, uh test of time and legacy. that's the one thank you yeah um <laughs> uh, but yeah um anyway um so yeah uh story i gave Story I gave a ten. Couldn't fault the story. Great messages, and uh, it was it was built up really well throughout the film. Um, was it uh, the characters? Uh, I gave a nine. I couldn't find any major faults with um, uh, the characters, but um, mm. I just felt that we. I just felt that with a couple of the characters, we didn't get as much screen time with them yeah. as the others but that's but that's the that's my only uh, that's probably like one of the only major that was probably one of the only issues that i have as far as the characters are concerned that yeah. some of them don't get enough screen time uh let's say visuals uh say, uh, that one i had to give a nine as well i mean don't get me wrong it's very well I'm done having, yeah it's like very, very well done but uh, with with some of the um uh, with some of the darker moments, uh, yeah, like I said earlier, some of it definitely would not pass today. Uh, let's say soundtrack, soundtrack, I gave a nine, uh, d just like what I did with um, yeah, Snow White. I mean, um, 
I mean, yes, there are there are just a few songs in in the film, but um, but at the end of the day, um, at the end of the day, I f- I felt that they could have put in possibly one more song, possibly. Yeah, definitely. But uh, but where that would but where it could have fitted, um, who knows? But uh, but I mean, songs aside, soundtrack, uh, well, score the film score, film score, fantastic all round, and test of time, that is without a doubt a ten, just because, <laughs> just because, like I've mentioned earlier, the messages it has, if you work yeah. hard, if you work hard for your dreams, they will come true. So yeah, there we go. That is it. Uh, oh, actually, just realised uh, I haven't actually done a final percentage. Uh, uh, so let's see. So uh, ten plus three nines plus another ten. Divide that by fifty. Ninety-four percent. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I say, uh, I say Snow White was. I'm pretty sure ninety. Yeah, Snow White was ninety six. <gasps> and um, uh, what score did Fantasia get? Well, you'll need to tune in for that episode to find out. Because <laughs> uh, uh, yes, I've already recorded it, but uh, that's one spoiler I'm definitely not giving away. <laughs> <laughs> but but anyway, that is it for um, uh, this episode of Kingdom of Isolation, where we isolate ourselves in the world of Disney magic. Uh, but yeah, Ellie, thanks very much for joining me today. Uh, Thank I'll, you. I am. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure I might get you back on board at some point. Uh, I was like, oh, I'd love to. Yeah. So yeah, and um, <laughs> I was like, and um, I was like, I was like, moving away from moving away from everything like that. I was like, uh, I, I really appreciate you um, uh, looking out for me, especially with what I've been going through over the last week or so oh you can always count on me fraser yeah I, 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 I really appreciate that I was like, I was like, th- there's a reason that the reason that me and ellie are great friends because like i mentioned at the start she just personifies positivity despite uh, what we both went through yeah so oh, you're it- too kind <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, but yeah, um, but yeah. Stay tuned later this week for um, uh, Fantasia for for our, for my review of Fantasia. Uh, and so like I say, if um, I say, if anybody wants to join me for reviewing Dumbo, you know where to reach me. Uh, but in the meantime, hope you enjoyed what you saw. Uh, did you enjoy Pinocchio? If you've seen it, um, uh, hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed what you saw. And if you if you want to keep up to date with what uh, what I do on here. Hit the subscribe button down at the bottom, and if you want to keep up to date with uh, this series in particular, make sure to click that notification bell so you don't miss anything I do on this channel. But uh, like I said, Ellie, thanks for coming along again today, and Thank uh, you. we will uh, see you guys uh, again later this week for Fantasia, and then after that, it's on to Dumbo. But until then, Wonderful. but until then, <laughs> we will see you guys again soon. Bye bye for now. <laughs>